The following is a production of Learfield Sports. It's an historic start for the Wisconsin Badgers. For the first time ever, they are 16-0. This past Sunday, a four-point come-from-behind win against Iowa. And a Wednesday night, 25-point victory against Illinois. We'll sit down with head coach Bo Ryan. We'll also hear from one of the key ingredients to this great start for the Badgers, junior guard Josh Gosser. All that and more on today's Badgers Sports Report. Rebound pulled down by Decker on the push. Sam up the middle, to the line, down the lane, to the rim, layup good. Decker, rim to rim. Caney top of the circle feeds, Bruss, he'll measure a three, take it and make it, but straight away. Jackson against Nunn, left hand dribble, down the lane, to the rim, up with the right hand, yes, it counts and a foul. Oh, a sweet move to the rim from Trey Jackson. Here's Trey to the front court for Wisconsin. He'll throw to Bruss, wide open three left side, thank you very much. It was almost too easy, wasn't it? It was. Works off the wing, in the lane, kick out. It. Anderson for three, left side, got it! Evan Anderson for three. And we're about to say something we have never said before involving Wisconsin basketball. The Badgers are 16-0. and And they do it in very convincing fashion tonight as the Badgers blow out the Illini. Final score, Wisconsin 95, Illinois 70. It means a lot, you know, you, you take pride in what you've done to this point. You know, you can't really ignore it as a player just because uh, you try to go out and win every game. And so far we have, but it also means we have a lot of expectations to uphold and uh, with a lot more work to do. You know, we're, we're nowhere near, con near content with, by uh, where we are at now, and now we have even bigger target on our backs that people are going to want want to knock you off. So uh, now we got to you know tighten up our laces a little more and uh, get right to it and be ready for these next few games. We're uh, excited for what's next. Uh, we can we can get so much better. And I still think we haven't played a full a full game yet to our like maximum potential. So uh, that's where we got to go and practice and uh, look at the film and go out against Indiana and try to do that. I was just talking about this with uh, Vito yesterday that uh, do we expect to be like this when we are uh, committed here and um, you know don't want to say we're shocked or anything that we couldn't do this but um, you know no team goes in saying we're going to be 16 you know at this point in the season but um, you know can't complain with wins and we're happy about it but we, um, like I said earlier we have to stay focused and uh, continue to improve. Down the lane, right hand, slam dunk, Sam Decker. Inbounds pass to Brust, across half court, he'll hoist one up, he hit it! Big Brust for three! Stamps off for three, right of the circle, and it's off the rim and in! Jackson strikes again! Out the gossip for three, he hit it again! The Badger Sports Report with Bo Ryan is brought to you by Charter Communications. By the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. By Zimbrick Buick GMC. By Adidas. And by UW Health, a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics. This is Andrew Zielsdorf. He plays hockey. This is leukemia. It's bad business. This is Andrew's oncology team. They love Andrew. They don't like leukemia. And thanks to them, Andrew is now cancer free. Booyah. They are the world renowned physicians, scientists, and nurses at the American Family Children's Hospital. Pioneers in pediatric cancer care. UW Health, remarkable. I'm not what the girls here would call classically good looking. I spent most of my youth in the dreaded friend zone. That all changed when my folks got Charter TV. I discovered tons of chick flicks in HD and on demand and learned all the secrets to romancing the high school girl. Now in a school full of boys, I'm the man. I'm the man. Get Charter TV starting at $29.99 per month. Charter, make way for more. Whether you're out there training for a big event or you're just trying to stay in shape, I have a bit of advice. It's important to remember that what happens after the workout is just as important as what happens during the workout. My advice, 
be sure to refuel with low-fat chocolate milk. It has the perfect mixture of protein, carbs, and electrolytes to help you refuel, rehydrate, and build muscle. In Wisconsin, athletes win with low-fat chocolate milk. And you can too. To learn more, visit winwithchocolatemilk.com. I know something about winning championships. And at Zimbrick Buick and GMC, you have one. Zimbrick Buick's tradition of customer care dates back to 1965. And Zimbrick continues to provide each of our customers with high quality personal service you can rely on. I'm part of the Zimbrick Buick and GMC team, and you should be too. Uh, I mean, I don't want to take any credit away from the last two years' team because they're still really good teams. It's just, you know, different personnel, different, uh, you know, styles that fit the personnel. So I just think that this year we put more of an emphasis on uh, being aggressive earlier. I think that when you have a talented group like we have that is one through five and, you know, three, four guys off the bench that are good, um, you have to, you know, take advantage of what the defense gives you. And this league is too, uh, it's too hard to, you know, take every possession in the half court. You gotta take some easy, easy layups, easy threes to what they give you. We can do that, we're talented enough to do that. So we preach that and we try to do it. As long as you take care of the ball and you take good shots, it's, it's, it's worth for it. I think that we just did a good job of moving the ball and really getting it out in transition, um, taking what they gave us. Uh, I think that when we really put on that lead, I think we hit some threes in transition, some easy putbacks and uh, you know, we were just being aggressive. When we're aggressive, I think we're at our best. Uh, I think when we get uh, into trouble, we kind of get passive, kind of wait to the end uh, of the shot clock somewhat. But when we're at our best, you know, we're attacking, everybody's looking to score, everybody's looking to make a play, whether it's drive and kick, and that's what we did during that run. You know, I just think we have a bunch of guys that know how to make plays and, um, you know, bring different things to the table. Like, we got you know guys like Trey that like to bring, break guys down off the dribble, and. Guys like Nigel that can beef up inside, and Frank that can extend the defense as a five and hit threes, and, and Ben and Josh who are you know snipers from the outside. So you know when you have guys like that that would do multiple things and they bring multiple things to the table, um, you know it's much harder to scout than you know going up against a team that has you know maybe one or two shooters and then uh, one slasher and then a postman. You know so us having a bunch of versatility on the offensive end, um, you know it just makes it a tougher matchup and. Uh, you know, it's worked to our favor so far. Yeah, I think so. I just think we went, you know, stronger to the hole, uh, myself included. I, I, I think against Iowa, I kind of, you know, long jump instead of high jumped, and I kind of, you know, looked for the contact too much. And here, I just, you know, just went up and used my length and my size against some smaller defenders. And, um, you know, Frank, you know, it, it's good to see Frank, you know, making some good, good post moves early on in the game because that gives him a lot of confidence. Uh, to stay inside and stay in the paint. And then Nigel, you know, is always one of the strongest guys on the court, and he's going to finish through contact whenever. So uh, when we can finish those, finish those buckets in the paint and, you know, get to the line and hit those, uh, we're going to be much tougher to defend. Draws the double right now, splits them and goes to the rim. Up, no good. Rebound into Kaminsky. Out to Duke and a low pass. Duye on the floor. Tapped at the brush. Off the right wing. Tried to leave it for Hayes. Gets there low on the right. Takes it left. Layup good. It counts and a foul. Oh my goodness. What hustle all the way around. Wisconsin now 3-0 in the Big Ten after wins this past week against Iowa on Sunday night and a Wednesday night victory against Illinois. 16-0. For the first time in program history, um, I know you worry about next, or to focus on next, but hopefully you can enjoy this. No one's been ever, ever been able to say that about Wisconsin basketball, 16 and 0. Well, uh, you know, I, it, it is a nice feeling for me because of the players, because of what they've accomplished, the work they put into it. But 
you know, it's a basketball season. It's halfway through. It's, uh, there's so many more tough games coming. There's so much more to be played. But they've established uh, something to this point with the idea that they took the court 16 times and came out on the left-hand side. So I, I got to give the players the credit because uh, they're the ones that are executing right now and doing a pretty good job of it. Boy, they, they were able to steer their attention right away after the, the game against Iowa, a very hard fought, down 11 points on a couple of occasions to come back and win that game. And then you have another team that's playing really well in the top 25, Illinois, coming in. But you guys do a pretty good job of staying locked into the moment, don't they? Well, that's what we try to get our players to understand. It's, uh, you know, the, the other team's going to bring what they have, whether their record coming in is good, bad, or somewhere in between. And we know how the game can get away from you in a hurry. We know how the game, uh, you know, can be, can be mean, can be cruel, <laughs> and it can also be very good to you. So I, I think our guys have figured out some things. Um, there's still areas where we need improvement, obviously, but... I think to this point, at least they've been listening and at least they've been responding. You made Ravante Rice earn his points. He ended up with 19. He's a Big Ten's leading scorer coming in, but 21 shots. So he must have been doing a lot of good things there defensively as a team. Bertrand got his points as well, but you know, they shoot less than 32% from the field. You know, and where you score 95, maybe it's odd that I'm at looking at defensive numbers first, but. That's pretty good work on that end of the floor. Well, Most the percentages, yeah. And what we, you know, we gave up some second and third shots where, when we shouldn't have. I think we got the, I don't think we maintained our blockout responsibilities as well as I know we can uh, in an area that we got to keep working on. So, but those shooting percentages are ones that say the defense was doing something right. You know, we, were, <laughs> we were making them work. And, um, you know, on our offensive end, Fortunately for us, our spacing was pretty good. We were getting some good looks, and uh, our points per possession obviously were very high. Yeah, and balance again. We've been, and it's nice to be able to be repetitive on a topic like this, uh, as we look at your team this year, and, and many of your better teams have been like this. You have five guys in double figures, um, hard to guard. I would think if you're the other guys trying to stop the Badgers right now. Well, I really like the way we're sharing the ball. I really like the way we're, uh, you know responding to um, if somebody comes off uh, a player and tries to double the ball or stop the ball, we're finding the open guy. Uh, we're doing a pretty good job of that. And, and that's how you get that kind of balance. And it kind of, we're trying to keep the other team on their heels a little bit. It's not easy. But I think our guys to this point have done a pretty good job of that. It's so much fun when you're able to get some other guys in the game as you were able to do against Illinois if it's, if it's Jordan Hill. When Evan hit that three, Evan Anderson, his teammates, and we've seen it through the years, and it, it doesn't get old to watch. You see, everybody's excited for him. For he's him. got a little touch. He does. Outside, you know, he? He's a pretty good three-point shooter in our drills. He's, and I'll tell you, he works so hard as the opposing team's big man in our practices. He and Vito and Jordan Hill and the rest of the guys that are red-shirting. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's always good to get a little something back that way. And... Uh, he has just been working so hard all these years, and uh, you know he, he certainly isn't someone that we overlook when it comes to trying to figure out why we're 16 and 0 or why we're sitting where we are. Th those guys have uh, have made an unbelievable contribution, and uh, they're anxious. They're they're trying to get in a little more. They're trying to get playing time. And that's what's good about life wanting, you know, and working yeah, and absolutely. trying to get something. So absolutely. We, we want them to keep working. We only have about a minute left, which really isn't going to do justice to the game against Iowa, but the first time this year airs, it's a week removed from that game. But for your guys to come back, it was multiple times that Iowa had a double-digit lead. They're a very, very good team. The composure that your guys have, I know there's a long way to go in the season, but to be able to do that against a hot team like that, probably says something about a lot of your team in general, but especially those younger guys who just didn't yeah, blink. They, they stayed to the task for the most part, meaning they, they didn't get down and, and start thinking about two possessions ahead of how they can cut into a lead. You think about the possession at hand. And we talk about that a lot, but until the guys go out there and do it, uh, which they did against Iowa, um, which told us a lot that they, they've got it in them, um, and, you know, it's, they, they played the percentages. They, they played the percentages of we're still going to, we're not going to take quick shots. We're not going to take bad shots. We're still going to work for good shots. And we can cut into this league. 
And, and at the other end, defensively, let's make some stops. And they did. And they did. And cut into the lead, caught them, and passed them en route to that victory last Sunday night. Badgers now, as we mentioned, 3-0 and and 16-0 and overall. Next up, Indiana. The Badgers will be down in Bloomington next Tuesday with the tip time, 6 o'clock Central Time. Stay with us. The coach returns in a few minutes with the great dang great question of the week. All that and more as the Badgers Sports Report continues. I'm not what the girls here would call classically good looking. I spent most of my youth in the dreaded friend zone. That all changed when my folks got Charter TV. I discovered tons of chick flicks in HD and on demand and learned all the secrets to romancing the high school girl. Now in a school full of boys, I'm the man. I'm the man. Get Charter TV starting at $29.99 per month. Charter, make way for more. Here is a story I'd like to impart, a tale of a little girl's sick, ailing heart. It begins with her doctor and favorite nurse, then on to her blankie and polka dot purse. As we are the UW, it is doubly true. We have gizmos and gadgets all shiny and new. With talents and skill and brain power galore, we fixed Kennedy's heart, so she is sick no more. UW Health and the American Family Children's Hospital. Remarkable. The buzzer beaters, the high school tournaments, the conference titles, truly the court of champions. Parker Street Productions LLC has acquired pieces of the basketball court used at the Kohl Center from 1998 until 2008, now making them available to you. 61 teams walked off this court with a trophy. Now you can take home your own trophy, a piece of history. Log on to courtofchampions.com today. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. Gosser outside right, high screen from Hayes. Josh, little teardrop of the lane, good with the right hand. First points for Josh, 18 to 10, Wisconsin. 13, Decker against Ravante Rice. Sam got by him, front court with the feed for Gosser. Off the right wing, and a clear path to the basket. Gosser will take it and make it. Off the right wing and to the rim. Canada game is really the first time I really played. Um, you know, I played in maybe one or two days of open gym uh, prior to that, but that was really the first time I actually played some competition so uh, you know I wasn't out there you know trying to do too much at all I was just kind of trying to see how my knee would respond to running up down the court cutting um, just playing so um, th those five games really helped out a lot I think the brace that you wear during games mm -hmm. how has it been getting used to that and how long did it kind of take you to get comfortable with it yeah I'm probably used to it now you know I went through um, through the, the whole rehab process in the summer and the spring and coming to the fall, I wore it uh, during all my stuff. So uh, Henry did a great job with me of preparing me to, because that's a big obstacle, you know, just getting used to that clunky brace. It's just kind of annoying, you know, I've never played with anything like that before. So, um, but as of now, I'm, I'm definitely used to it. I feel comfortable with it on. Um, and it just gives me that kind of self, uh, sense of confidence to, you know, go in the lane and uh, nothing's going to happen. So I, I don't really mind it too much. It's annoying, but I know it helps. You play so hard, you're taking bumps, bruises, whatever. Um, I, I think a lot of people, when you go down, they think the worst. Mm -hmm. How, how do you not think the worst <laughs> when you, you know, you get up every time? Uh, I'm just used to it. You know, I'm used to being on the floor. I'm used to, you know, taking charges, doing whatever I need, I need to do that way. Um, you know, the hard part for me is not doing it in practice. I'm trying to, you know, sometimes in practice, there'll be a 50-50 ball or a loose ball, and you know, I want to go for it, but. Um, I just know that it's probably not the best idea sometimes, you know, just some nagging injuries and stuff like that, you know, I just try to um, get my body healthy for games really, and that's something that's get hard to get used to, and it's hard for me to take in mentally uh, to do that, but I know it's best for myself and for this team, you know, to kind of um, get my body healthy during the week of practice, and then come game time, uh, throw it all out there. The, uh, I know it was tough to sit there and watch last year. How much are you enjoying now being back and, and kind of getting this gift back? Yeah, it's so fun, uh, just competing each day, uh, being part, a part of a team. You know, last year, 
I was obviously a part of the team, but it was just so different. You know, I wasn't in the locker room as much. I wasn't on the court with the guys. So um, that's what all this is about. It's about you know developing those relationships, competing, uh, and hopefully winning games, which we've done so far. You know, that's what makes it really fun. Um, but yeah, it was a tough year, definitely. Um, you know, there'll be some games where I'm, I'm not really happy with my performance or, or the team's performance, but you know, you just got to take a step back and realize, you know, how fortunate I am to be playing again and, and stuff like that. So uh, you just got to look at the big picture. You know, adrenaline is really what gets me through a lot of games to be 100%. You know, some days my, my knee will be bothering me a little bit or, or other, you know, dings and bruises. And um, so I just, you know, practice is hard to get that adrenaline rush going to, to compete as hard. Um, you know, you still come out every day trying to get better, trying to improve um, in, in the scout team of, of different opponents. But uh, at the same time, once the lights are on and you're playing in front of everyone, um, that's what really what really matters. So, um, like I said, it's, it's really hard for me not to compete as hard as I want to in practice. You know, I want to dive for loose balls. I want to, you know, get every block out and stuff like that. But uh, I know it's best for my team if I if I can somehow do all those things without you know putting my body at risk. What did they tell you originally that you would be, I don't know if it's back to your old self or whatever, what was the kind of timeline that they, that they said? Um, you know, until, to the point where I won't feel it anymore and to where I'd be 100%, it's probably, they said, you know, a couple years, you know, by the time next year starts maybe, and uh, that's probably true, you know, I feel good, I feel like I can play and compete, uh, definitely, um, but at the same time, I still feel it, you know, I still, there's some sharp pains, there's some discomfort every once in a while, but uh, that's just the way it goes, and, and by now I'm used to it. You know, I know uh, I pretty much experienced everything, and it just keeps coming back. So I know it's okay. I know it's it's natural, and that I can get through it. So uh, that's a big thing mentally. All this rehab, all the long hours of work to get out there on the court and, and compete for you know the university, my teammates, and coaches. So um, I'm gonna do whatever I can, and you know, put my body on the line, do whatever I need to do, and come spring, is that's where I can I can rest and recover. <laughs>
understands he had some special guests in town this past weekend to watch the Badgers, and they were very special guests, weren't they? They were special guests. It was a Wounded, a wounded Warriors project. Uh, 20, 20 veterans uh, came in, watched practice the day before, and they actually sat and watched practice, stayed awake, and and were really uh, attentive. I, I could have given them a test, and they'd have had 100 on it. Great, great people, um, you know, and. You know, just for a guy like myself who was in the service during the Vietnam uh, conflict, just to, to see how those guys came back in the 70s and how they were treated and to see how veterans are now coming back and people are trying to help and trying to get uh, these projects together to help them out with getting jobs and, and uh, being thanked for their service and trying to give them an experience that would be fun for them. Mm -hmm. They claim they had fun, you know, at the practice and at the game. Our players were great with them. Um, some of them, they didn't know I was a military policeman. They were a little nervous. That <laughs> they I got a little been, tight. And you know, I was looking for somebody. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, it, it was great. Rick Piacenza did a great job of organizing the whole event. And uh, hats off to the Wounded Warriors, and uh, we definitely thank them for their service. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you were busy at halftime, but they were introduced to the crowd at halftime of the game last Sunday. You got a very, very warm ovation, and to say the least, very deserved at that. George, we thank you for your question. The Great Dane with four locations in Madison, east side of town, downtown Pittsburgh, as well as Hilldale. Coach Ryan's radio show will pick up at the Great Dane Hilldale on January 20th. And, of course, that Great Dane is still there up in Wausau as well. Thank you for joining us. Join us next week as we recap another big week of Badger basketball as they move forward in Big Ten Conference play. Thanks for watching. When you buy Wisconsin dairy products, your hard-earned dollar brings you more than just the quality and great taste you know and love. It supports the dairy industry, which in turn reinvests that money back into your community, resulting in better public services, abundant recreation opportunities, and a beautiful place to call home. In all, dairy contributes $26.5 billion to Wisconsin's economy and eventually comes back to benefit you. To learn more, visit youtube.com slash Dairy Impact Wisconsin. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics.